I'm Mark Neve, Chief Diversity Officer for the Association of American Medical Colleges. Welcome to our Diversity 3.0 Learning Series. We are very pleased to bring you this set of online resources, a source of insight from experts in the field on a range of issues which you tackle day to day. We've created these resources to help you leverage diversity and inclusion to drive institutional excellence. The AAMC is committed to serving as knowledge brokers, offering you the best content generated from within our network of relationships with thought leaders and practitioners. With this series, we bring this learning to your desktop or device for on-demand learning that suits any schedule. Visit us in the future for additional content, and thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Kristen Exterand, and I'm an MD-PhD candidate at the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. And today, I'll be talking to you about integrating lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or LGBT health into medical education. Now, it's important to recognize that under most circumstances, whether you are a student, faculty member, or administrator, most of the work being done in this area is being done by individuals who are compelled to the cause, donating their time, effort, and energy. In that light, it is important that we use a model for change management in order to optimize our effort and our outcomes. At Vanderbilt, we use a five-step iterative model for change, where we begin by establishing the need for change and opportunities for improvement. We then assemble a team of individuals who are able to move this change forward. This team of key stakeholders can then design and implement and evaluate a proposal that is aimed at addressing the original need for change, as well as identifying ongoing opportunities for improvement. Establishing the needs for change in LGBT health is simple. LGBT individuals face medical, financial, and cultural health disparities. Medicine contributes to these disparities through a lack of appropriate education and cultural competency training. As medical educators, we have a duty to LGBT individuals to train our future providers in the core aspects of LGBT health. In 2007, the Association of American Medical Colleges put forth that all medical curricula should ensure that students master the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to provide excellent and comprehensive care to the LGBT community. This should include communication training with peers and colleagues and patients regarding sexual orientation and gender identity, as well as a comprehensive curriculum around LGBT health. At Vanderbilt, our local surveys of third and fourth year medical students show that only 36% of our students feel adequately trained to care for LGBT individuals. Further, less than 10% of our students know how to refer LGBT patients to LGBT-friendly health care providers and services if they themselves cannot provide care. Together, this national and local data say to us that we need to train our future physicians in the core aspects of LGBT health. In order to bring this change forward, medical students put together a comprehensive proposal that was given to the administration of Vanderbilt that included national recommendations for LGBT education, what other students are doing in the field of LGBT health, ways to assess the current curriculum and opportunities for improvement in our current curricula, as well as references and resources to learn more about LGBT health. This proposal was picked up by the Associate Dean for Undergraduate Medical Education, Dean Kim Lomas, as well as faculty member Regina Russell and medical student Billy Sullivan. And together as a team, we sought to improve the core aspects of LGBT health in our education. We discussed opportunities for doing this, specifically a top-down approach where we tell faculty members what should be in the curriculum. But this only ensures that students will get the knowledge not that the faculty members can convey the skills and the attitudes to care for the LGBT community. We also discussed doing a standalone elective course, but this would only mean that a select subset of students who are interested in the topic learn how to care for the LGBT community. We opted instead for full curriculum integration so we can teach the core aspects of LGBT health to all students. Recognizing that it is the training faculty themselves that are necessary for implementing the core aspects of LGBT health, we assessed all preclinical and clinical course directors' attitudes, barriers for including LGBT health, and their perceptions on the current curriculum. 
We further offered these faculty members an opportunity to identify by name if they wanted to revise their own curriculum to include the core aspects of LGBT health. When looking at faculty members' perceptions, we found overwhelmingly that faculty members felt that LGBT health was important to teach. 28% of the faculty members additionally stated that it was a personal knowledge deficit that kept them from integrating this information. Further, we identified seven faculty champions who wanted to revise their own curriculum in order to improve the teaching of LGBT health at Vanderbilt. To go back to our model, here we established the need for change to improve the core aspects of LGBT health education at Vanderbilt. We then brought together a team of students and faculty mentors that could move this change forward and then sought to assess faculty attitudes, perceptions, and barriers to implementing this change. When evaluating these outcomes, we recognized that we needed to have a better understanding of these barriers and where we could actually implement and improve our education. Here, we again established the need for change in these faculty interviews, where we learned that there is not enough comprehensive content available for faculty to educate themselves on the specific needs of LGBT individuals but that they wanted to integrate this into their own curriculum in support of LGBT patients and the LGBT community. An additional point that we recognized is that faculty didn't recognize the full scope of the problem with respect to the communication barriers and the education barriers for our students when working with this population. To try and change this, what we did was again establish a team of students and faculty mentors to work one-on-one -on -one with our faculty champions to revise and implement these changes in our curricula. To do this, we had individual students go through all of the course materials for these individual courses and integrate it with known research and LGBT-related content, formulate a course revision that we sat down and worked with the course director in order to implement and provide continued support to include LGBT content. One of the most exciting innovations that we have worked on is a specific clinical intervention in the pediatrics clerkship, where at four time points throughout the year, we provide a clinical intercession where students receive a short lecture, but then work with LGBT adolescents and a knowledgeable faculty mentor to learn about the specific health needs of LGBT adolescents. We assess students' perceptions towards the LGBT community as well as their attitudes and behaviors before and after this intercession and found that just this two-hour intercession itself changed students' attitudes and behaviors towards caring for LGBT patients. Through continuous reiteration of this cycle for change management, not only have we made changes at the medical school itself, we have made changes across the medical center through establishing the Vanderbilt Program for LGBTI Health, where we look not only at education, but at patient care, policies, community outreach, as well as institutional climate to improve our own institution and the way that we interact with the LGBT community. These projects have been successful for a number of reasons, including mentorship, where we have a climate where students are recognized as leaders and can bring important ideas to the table and be mentored by knowledgeable faculty in order to bring these changes in the climate. Additionally, curriculum reform has provided a great opportunity for us to work with faculty members already revising their curricula. A continual drive for improvement and success has additionally led for improvement at Vanderbilt with respect to LGBT health as well as resources and support from administration. Learning points that we have garnered from this project is that change management overcomes barriers. Students can be a vital source of energy and change and forward progress at medical centers. National guidelines are very helpful in guiding program development. Professional training is necessary in order for the faculty to be able to convey the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to students but also for us to train current providers and clinicians on core aspects of LGBT health. Finally, the rate of change with which we are able to improve the core aspects of LGBT health reflects institutional climate itself and the institution's attitude towards the LGBT community. On a personal note, I want to tell you all about an experience I had as an LGBT adolescent. 
My freshman year in college, I had moved away to attend school in Wisconsin. I was far away from home and without friends, and I was feeling extremely depressed, as we all know is quite common in LGBT adolescents. Feeling depressed, and additionally coming back home, I went to talk with my doctor about how to handle this depression. Not having come out to a medical professional before, I sat down with her and was telling her about the sadness and hopelessness that I experienced. She was nodding compassionately and listening, and when she asked me if there was anything else that was on my mind, I told her that I was gay. As soon as I told her my sexual orientation, she sat back in her chair and crossed her arms. And her first question of me was, have you found Jesus? And it surprised me, and I didn't know what to say. And in retrospect, I thought to myself, how surprising is it that she assumed that I wasn't religious because of my sexual orientation, that my depression itself was solely because of my sexual orientation. And if I believed the same way she did, I wouldn't be depressed and I wouldn't have this problem. So I left the doctor, not receiving the care that I need, but felt comfortable telling the story to my mom and to my family. And unlike the support uh, that many other LGBT adolescents don't get, my family listened and supported me through that time. And they were the ones that cared for me when healthcare wasn't caring. Thank you all for listening.